The search for Cavalcante put our entire region on edge for the past 14 days. It also dominated national headlines. But around 8.20 this morning, Cavalcante was apprehended. This here is a picture of Cavalcante shortly after his capture. You can see he was wearing an Eagles sweatshirt when he was found. Cavalcante escaped from prison two weeks ago, prompted an intense search throughout the county. And take a look at this map here. It really shows you the area where this escapee was captured this morning in South Coventry Township, Chester County. You can also see the county prison where he escaped exactly 14 days ago today. Let's get right to NBC 10's Brian Sheehan. He was at that news conference announcing Cavalcante's capture. Brian, walk us through how this all went down. Some major developments overnight. Yeah, Keith and Aaron, uh, state police say those major developments started around midnight when a burglar alarm went off at a residence on Prizer Road. Of course, that's a road that we've mentioned multiple times over the past several days uh, within that search perimeter where investigators believe Cavalcante was near. So what happened was uh, law enforcement moved into the area. They did not find Cavalcante, uh, but we are told that multiple agencies moved in, secured that area. Area, uh, and a helicopter uh, took flight over the area and using that heat thermal technology actually picked up uh, heat sensors uh, around one o'clock this morning. However, uh, as we know, there was bad weather that was moving into the region at that time. So the helicopter had to leave the area, but the tactical teams uh, secured the area. They moved in on the ground, monitored the area overnight, made sure that whatever that heat sensor was, if it was in fact Danilo Cavalcante did not get past their perimeter. Uh, so then around 8 o'clock this morning, we are told that that aircraft was in flight and picked up that heat sensor once again. At that point, a tactical team moved in on the ground, snuck up behind Danilo Cavalcante, uh, who was on the ground. Once he was alerted of their presence, we're told he then sort of bear crawled on the ground through brush while carrying uh, that that rifle, that caliber, uh, 22 caliber rifle that we were told that he obtained a few days ago. At that point, the tactical teams actually unleashed the canine dog, who we were told was able to restrain uh, Danilo Cavalcante, and we were told that he did, in fact, have a bite mark. Uh, but once the canine officer uh, got Danilo Cavalcante, we were told that Cavalcante still resisted until uh, troopers, until uh, law enforcement were able to bring him into custody. Now, we have mentioned multiple times that they were given the use of force if necessary, but we talked to Colonel Bivens about uh, their decision not to use that this morning. Here's what he had to say. Well, as I addressed uh, a few minutes ago, yes, he had the firearm with him. Yes, he was a threat. He did not have an opportunity. I believe he was uh, taken by surprise, and I believe the canine played a large role in him not being able to utilize that firearm. What I would tell you is, again, that it is our last choice, our last preference to use lethal force. And so while there were other options, the team did the responsible thing, did what they're trained and what we expect, and they used other options. And again, lethal force is always the last option. All right, so where is Danilo Cavalcante right now? We are told that he was transported uh, to the state police barracks in Avondale, where investigators are trying to question him. Uh, and then at some point, he will be transported to a state correctional facility. However, we are told at this point in time, they are not releasing uh, the name of that facility. It will become public, uh, presumably at some point later today. Lieutenant, Lieutenant Colonel Bivens telling me live here a few minutes ago, uh, he will serve the rest of his life sentence in the inside a state correctional facility. For now, live in Kennett Square, Chester County, I'm Brian Sheehan, NBC 10 News. Keith and Aaron will send it back to you. Relief to many people mm -hmm. out there. All right, Brian, thanks for that. Let's go to NBC 10's Deanna Durante. She's been closely following this story for the past two weeks. Yeah, she joins us now live from the Pennsylvania State Police Barracks in Avondale, Chester County, where Cavalcante is being held. Deanna, we've been talking to you on the phone. We're finally getting to see your face here because you've been all over the place. Uh, tell us about how this all went down this morning.
Well, you heard a little bit of it from Brian there. We can tell you that it was overnight that a federal plane picked up what they call a heat signature. And overnight, they planned. They tightened up that perimeter. You had that perimeter that was miles wide, miles long, and they were able to kind of zero in on one area. First thing this morning, I talked to a team out of uh, Montgomery County. They were on the ground there getting ready inside that interior perimeter there. One source telling me we believe he's in there. Actually, we know he's in there, that source told me. And it was just about... Uh, a few minutes later that we started hearing they may have him and that he's been caught. We can tell you he is inside the state police barracks here at Avondale. He'll be transported in that Bearcat vehicle that you saw uh, Sky Force 10 following from the scene there uh, from northern Chester County to here to southern Chester County. He's going to go to a state prison. We know that once he was spotted, once there was movement on the ground when the SWAT team went in, that it was a police dog that uh, subdued him, that he tried to crawl away, still having that weapon. And despite having that weapon, and we're told a, a fully loaded magazine, no shots were fired here. Uh, the best possible outcome, despite the fact that this hunt took 14 days, but no one was injured. Calvacante, we have seen in photographs, uh, was bleeding from the head, but that bleeding quickly stopped. He's wearing that Eagle sweatshirt. It looks like there's a little blood on that sweatshirt. He uh, had his clothes cut off of him, I'm told, before he was loaded into the Bearcat, brought here to Avondale. And we'll be able to tell how much he's really cooperating by his length of stay here. If he's going to tell police everything he knows, who helped him, how they helped him, what he did, that may take a little bit of time. Of course, he doesn't have to tell them anything. And if he chooses not to speak to them, then he could be booked, uh, photographed, and then sent to a state prison. So it really will be how long and how much information he wants to give. And just the fact that he's in custody at this point does not mean that this case is over. You still have the the investigation as to how he got out of the prison in the first place. Obviously, we've seen that video of him crab walking up to the roof. We're told he used a towel to cover that barbed wire to get out, that a guard may have missed seeing him on the grounds there. Was there a distraction? Did he have help from other inmates? That's all going to be part of that investigation. What more does Chester County need to do to secure the prison? That'll be a secondary investigation. And then the investigation into what has he been doing for the last 14 days? Who knew what he was doing? Who knew where he was and who was helping him? We do know that some of the items that he had when he left the Chester County prison was just the clothes off his back. And over the last 14 days, he managed to change his appearance. He managed to change his clothes. Somehow he was getting food. Uh, we know that from some of our sources that when he was arrested in the early 2000s in Brazil, that he was able to survive in the jungle for quite some time before entering this country illegally and remaining pretty much off the grid, that is, until that homicide that he was just convicted of. So they're going to be taking a hard look back at all of that. And again, you've heard it over and over. If anybody helped him, if anybody provided assistance, if anybody didn't tell police what they knew right away, they're going to figure that out, and that'll all be part of the investigation there. The attorney general has come out and said her office will be charging him with escape, and she is continuing that investigation as well. So despite the fact that he is in custody, the police investigations around all of this, far from over. That's the latest. Back to you. And we know you will stay on top of it. Deanna Durante reporting live for us. You can count on NBC10 for complete coverage of the manhunt for Danilo Cavalcante. Download the free NBC10 app for updates and breaking news alerts.